I get asked from time to time, Brother Fox, what's a good investment? How do I know how to invest? Well, I only invest in things that I know something about, companies that I have um, respect for and are managed well. And so that means 90% of the companies in the world, I have almost no idea what they do. <laughs> but a few companies, I've studied a little bit to know what they do. And if they uh, are run effectively by their leadership, and of course, I only want to invest in things that a Christian should invest in. So I'm not inv investing in alcoholic beverage. I'm not going to do that. Uh, the Bible has 70 passages, more than 70 passages, that warn against alcoholic beverage. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to invest in that. But I'm going to try to invest in things that I know something about. That I've also researched them. Um, that they're a good company because when you buy a share um, uh, in a stock, you're buying a little piece of the company. And you want to buy little pieces of companies that you believe will be uh, successful. And you get a return on your money so that you can uh, give and pay your bills and, you know, be effective. You want to be a good manager of the finances that God has given you. Be very, very careful about investing in things that you know nothing about. Don't do that. I've mentioned that in several of these videos. And most of the videos have been very, very practical and really designed for beginners. Well, today in a conversation, I mentioned this word, EBITDA. It's not really a word. It's, a, um, it's an acrostic. And so I thought uh, there was such a, um, a reaction today when I used the expression that, um, and it was unfamiliar to them, that I thought maybe I should try to explain what that even is. And in the business world, in the accounting world, um, this is uh, a common way to find a core value of a company. Is the company profitable? Is it, is it worthwhile to invest in? So what is EBITDA? That's the way I pronounce it, okay? Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. That's EBITDA. And maybe you've heard it, but you really don't know what it means. You know it's a valuable thing to know, <laughs> to learn something about the balance sheet of the company. That sounds like it might be a good thing to know. So this mysterious thing called EBITDA, what is it? Uh, well, I've tried to draw up a little uh, sheet to explain a little bit. Let's pretend we've got a company. Uh, maybe it's a grass cutting lawn service that uh, has two or three folks cutting. One man owns it and he's got a couple of uh, part-time employees. And let's say that he um, uh, is in the South where he cuts grass almost all year long. And, uh, you know, 10 and a half months out of the year, he cuts grass. And so um, with his lawn service, he had a revenue of $200,000. That was his annual revenue. And then we got this thing, COGS, whatever that is, $52,000. So that brings the gross profit down, $148,000. Well, then there's depreciation. His lawnmowers, they got older and uh, a little more worn, and they're not as valuable as they were. And then whatever this is, these other initials here, S, G, and A, and it's got $3,000 over here, whatever S, G, and A is. And then interest. Well, most of us understand interest on a loan. The business um, took out a little loan to buy some of this equipment, the trailer and the, and the tractors and the you know, grass cutting equipment. And so they got some interest on their loan. And then they had to pay taxes. Oh, yeah, along the way, there's some taxes. We all have some idea that tax <laughs> taxes are inevitable. They have to be ta uh, be paid, these taxes. And so this, um, this businessman with his little uh, lawn cutting uh, service, his um, uh, grass cutting service, $36,000 in taxes. Wow. So net earnings, 103000 Is that what his EBITDA is? Is that it? 
Is, is it the same thing as this earnings? And, and what are these other things up here? COGS, COGS. Well, I wrote uh, those out to explain a little what it is. COGS, cost of goods and um, uh, cost of goods sold. You know, um, had to get some gas, and um, you know there there's uh, uh, spark plugs and there's um, uh, equipment uh, uh, replacements that have to be done, and and so there's there's cost going into the uh, services. Now, a grass cutting service, you know, most of it is just revenue, but you have to keep your equipment going and so forth. And so there are some cost of goods sold along the way. And maybe he's got uh, some grass seed he sells, and he's got some uh, fertilizer he sells, uh, some uh, up sales that he makes, and he's got some cost of goods sold. Well, and then this other mysterious S, G, and A. What in the world is S, G, and A? Selling, general, and administrative. These are accounting terms. S, G, and A. Selling, general, and administrative. You know, the business has to advertise, and um, they make some flyers, they make some business cards, they promote on social media, and they boost those posts, and they... Um, they run some flyers and they go door to door and put their flyers up on some doors in the neighborhood. And so there's some advertising and uh, website design and so forth. And so there is some S, G, and A that goes along. So let's go back to our, our little business sheet here. So we've got uh, the revenue, now cost of goods sold. Uh, and that makes a little more sense now, $52,000. He's got a couple of part-time employees that he has to pay. And so there is some expense here. It's mostly uh, his contract at help. Uh, this little businessman, he's got him two little part-time employees and they each made uh, 20 some thousand dollars. And so, okay, now it's starting to make sense. So his gross profit, gross profit, 148,000. Now his depreciation, his equipment going um, uh, to be less valuable now. He, he couldn't sell it for as much money now um, because they're, they're a year older now. So uh, there's depreciation. Then that S, G, and A, you know, all that administrative and promotional cost and so forth. Then the interest, we understood that from the beginning on his um, loan. And so then taxes, we certainly understood that. So is this 103, is that his... EBITDA, how much is his EBITDA? I thought about telling you, but I think it might be better for you to research and learn how to figure this out. And in the comments, I wonder if someone can leave a comment what the EBITDA of this business is. And is this something that we'll want to invest in or not? Well, there's other things that we have to evaluate. We really want to learn what is their intrinsic value. Their intrinsic value. God willing, I'm going to make a follow-up video somewhere in the future here that we talk about the intrinsic value of a company. You know, you want to buy a company? Wonderful. Say, yeah, I want to buy me a company. Well, you know, be very careful about investing in a company you know nothing about. If you want to buy this company out, you should know something about it. But before you just buy the company on a whim, or I use the word caprice sometimes, you know, just at an impulse, before you just say, yeah, I think I'll just buy that company. Sound like a good company to me. Maybe you ought to ask the business owner, hey, what's your EBITDA? So I don't know what my EBITDA is. Well, let me see your your uh, money, and let's uh, let's go back and find out what your revenue was, and let's find out what your cost of uh, goods sold was, and and let's start figuring out what your business is worth. What is your business worth? There's other questions along the way that we need to ask ourselves. What's best? Having a bunch of money in the bank or owning a successful business, which one of those is best?
These are analytical questions that I want to ask you. And then here's an analytical question. Is it better to, um, to invest uh, in a great company at a fair price? Or is it better to invest in a fair company at a great price? Which one of those scenarios are best? These are things to help you start thinking on how to invest. You know, a disciplined investor, they don't do it just by emotions. Don't do it by, I just got a good feeling about this company. Well, <laughs> feelings come and feelings go and feelings are deceiving. <laughs> Be very careful by, about just going by feelings. So much better to make some decisions based on facts, objective facts. And one of the objective facts before you invest money into a company, before you buy a company, before you invest in the stock market, some shares of a company, find out what their EBITDA is. That's not the only thing to find out, but that's one that you want to learn. What is their EBITDA? I hope that takes a tiny bit of the mystery out of <laughs> what the acrostic EBITDA is. God bless.